So I did one of these a couple of weeks ago and it was pretty popular. So I decided to try a different one. And this is a starter pack. This is for individuals who want to rediscover new bands or want to get a hold on a different genre of progressive rock. Progressive rock has a lot of facets to it. So I decided to kind of look at the different facets individually and conglomerate and create a, a starter pack for individuals. And today we're going to be looking at uh, a facet that I am very familiar with. This is one of the facets that really got me into Prague and one that I thoroughly enjoy. And this is what I have deemed as retro Prague. Now these are the type of bands that came about after the big explosion within the 70s. There's an emphasis on build-up. It's much more symphonic in nature. You are essentially looking at what was done in the past and applying it to now. Now this is different than Neo Prog, which was the first one that I covered, because Neo Prog was more of a rage against what was being put out that time by looking to what was done in the past and then moving forward from there. With Retro Prog, it's more of a celebration of what was captured beforehand. And I think this is the main difference, because you would definitely hear that style in both of the genres. Within Neo Prog, it tends to be a little bit more melodramatic, a lot more dramatic itself. Whereas Retro Prog is much more of a celebration of the music. It's a lot more symphonic in sound. It's a lot more upbeat. It's a lot happier. But enough about that. Let's get into the actual starter pack itself. Very similar to the Neo Prog starter pack that I did, there will be required listenings. These are the albums that I feel you need to listen to to really get into and understand retro prog and then I'll have some recommended readings those that are if you like that then go a little bit deeper with these cuts as well and so to start this whole thing off much like the neo prog you really have to look at the roots if it weren't for some of these albums you wouldn't have retro prog at all and we're looking at Genesis we're looking at yes and you do need to be a little bit familiar with say like King Crimson and Emerson Lake and Palmer just to get a good idea of where this came from now the essential listens, the required listens, I would definitely say is check out Foxtrot from Genesis to check out uh, Close to the Edge from Yes. These two albums will really give you an idea and a context for what to expect within Retro Prog. So coming into the actual Retro Prog albums, you're going to want to start off with Spock's Beard. They really made a name for themselves with The Light in 1995, and a lot of people say that this was the real breakout album from them, which was then followed up the next year with Beware of Darkness, and I really like that concept between them. And really, there are two different Spock's Beards. There's the one that came in the like 90s and 2000s um, with Neil Morse being the head of the band, where they put out The Light, Beware of Darkness, V, and Snow. Uh, and then post Neil, uh, with Feel the Euphoria, the self-titled work, X, and Brief Nocturnes. And because of this, there are two required listens. One from the post Neil, and one with the Neil inclusive. And the required with the Neil in it is going to be Snow. Uh, it's really hard not to include this one. This is a direct take off of say the land lies down on broadway with being a double disc concept album and it utilized a lot of the techniques that came from an album just a few years prior to this the shaming of the true by kevin gilbert and this is definitely one of those deep cut uh, recommended listens because if you listen to uh, the shaming of the true you hear where a lot of the influences and a lot of the genesis from Snow is, and so that gives you context for that album. And the second one that you need to listen to is the post Neil, and that is the Brief Nocturnes and Dreamless Sleep. I always say Sleepless Incidents, but yeah, the Brief Nocturnes. This was the uh, album for me that was the first real masterpiece from the band post Neil. Uh, this really shows that digging down and that symphonic sound. Uh, it utilizes such great buildups and those beautiful payoffs. Now from here, the two recommended albums I'm going to recommend are actually V and X, 5 and 10. Um, and V comes from uh, the Neil era, uh, and it has kind of that accessible, proggy aspects that the symphonic prog has. Uh, it has a lot of those kind of single types of songs but it also ends and starts with that big epic that we expect from this type of a, a style. 
And X has a very similar atmosphere, except it's a little bit less kind of accessible in the grand scheme of things, but it has such brilliant uh, songs like Jaws of Heaven, uh, The Man Behind the Curtain. Again, it showcases the musician and the playing styles of the retro prog very, very well. Now from here, we go on to the next artist, which is Flower Kings. I would be very remiss if I didn't include the Flower Kings in this starter pack because like Spock's beard, Flower Kings really rejuvenized and showed us that Prague isn't necessarily dead, no matter what the grand populace are saying. And they're from like the Swedish kind of progressive rock where there was such a really big movement of that type of a style. It was a lot more of a celebration of music at that point. And it took me a while to really hunker down and figure which albums from them were a required listen because each album, even though it has that signature Flower King's essence, they're still very different from one another, but I've hunkered down and I've came up with two required listens to really get the idea of Retro Prog in a Flower King sandbox. The first is Flower Power, which is a double disc, uh, and Flower Kings love their double discs. Uh, and so the first disc is a full on concept single song track. It's like well over 50 minutes. Uh, it's not quite an hour worth of music, but it does have that kind of dip in the middle, so it feels like that old style, one song, essence, kind of like the Jethro Tall from Thick as a Brick and Passion Play. The buildups and transitions from one movement to a next are flawless, uh, and it really captures that celebration of music. And if we want the celebration of music, we'll go into the next required listen, which is The Sum of No Evil. This one is by far probably my favorite. Flower King's album. It might not be their best, but it definitely is my favorite. It starts to show a little bit of the darkness that will come in with their last two works, but it also showcases just that celebration, that gushing of um, joy within the music. Uh, it also showcases the long playing styles of these musicians, that jamming sessions that they have that's very meticulously thought out and very well placed. Now the two other recommended albums from here are probably Adam and Eve, another single disc, as well as Unfold the Future, which is a double disc. Adam and Eve starts and ends with that big epic that's like, I think just under 20 minutes. Uh, but all the tracks in there are paired with, like, there's an opening track and a closing track with each of the subsequent songs. And Unfold the Future has one of my favorite pieces, which is The Truth Will Set You Free. Definitely need to check out that song. It's into the 30 minute mark, but it's such a beautiful song. It just has that beautiful buildup and that wonderful payoff. So if you take the two masterminds behind Spock's Beard and Flower Kings, you will get the next album by infusing it with the drummer of Dream Theater and the bass player of uh, Marillion, and that is Transatlantic. Uh, the idea behind this was taking the superstars of the current progressive rock scene within the early 2000s and just sitting them down and creating some beautiful mu music. Uh, and I was kind of jumping back and forth between two albums. So one will be a required and one will be a recommended. And the required is The Whirlwind. This is an 80 minute piece of music. It is one track. It really captures the spirit of retro prog magnificently. Uh, as I said, the buildups, the payoffs, the jamming sessions, that celebration of music, it's all found here. And it's kind of the poster child of this retro prog style. Uh, the recommended one is The Bridge Across Forever, and Bridge Across Forever is probably my favorite album from them. Uh, Whirlwind would be the one that I would have you guys listen to, but Bridge Across Forever holds my two favorite pieces from them. You know, The Devil in Your Soul, as well as uh, The Stranger in Your Eyes, I think it is. It's been a while, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the Stranger in Your Soul and The Devil in Your Mind. Anyway, the opening and closing track on those on that album it's just fantastic. Uh, and then that middle piece is just a delight. Um, so those are the two that you'll need to check out. Now, coming away from this, because those three are very closely linked and it is one that starts to become repetitive a little bit. So the next group is definitely required because it showcases a different side of that. And that is with the group of Big Big Train. Uh, these guys still take in that celebration, but it's much more of a UK and British styling. Like, if Flower Kings were very Swedish, if um, the Spock's beard was very American, then Big Big Train is 100% UK and British. Like, it is dripping with that kind of sentimentality. 
Uh, and the album that I will recommend to you is the English Electric Part 1. They do have the English Electric Part 2 as well as the Full Electric. The Full Electric is just mwah. But it's English Electric Part 1 that just holds some of the standout tracks that I come to Big Big Train with. Uh, you've got Judas Unrepresented, which just is so meaty and so hooky, and it has that more of an acoustical, symphonic sound to it. Uh, now, from here, if you like that, definitely check out the albums that followed up the Full Electric, which is Folklore. Uh, it's a little bit darker, but it still has that same kind of celebration and the same kind of essence as well as the album that came before it, which is the Underfell Yard. Uh, this guy was kind of what put them on the scene. The final one, in my mind, is the most important progressive rock band of this century. And I do not say that lightly. And I really hope they put out a new album soon because we desperately, desperately need it. And that is with one of my favorite progressive rock bands of all time, Moon Safari. Moon Safari came onto the scene kind of after the Flower Kings, in fact, Roland Stolt kind of gave them a, a little bit of a push, as well as Thomas Boudin, the keyboardist. Uh, and they put out some beautiful, beautiful music. Very optimistic, very happy. The lyrics might be a little bit on the melodramatic side, but it's the celebration of music that I just grabbed onto. And it never put down any other musical styles as well. And the album that is a required listen, if no other album is listened to, this is the one you have to listen to, and that's Bloom Jump, their second album. It's a double disker, and it's just that first disc that is just... It's perfect. I can't recommend the first disc more. The second disc is okay, it's definitely the weaker of the two, but it does have their magna opus of... Um, the other half of the sky, their 30 plus minute giant gushing of music. I'm not as big of a fan of this as say their Lover's End Suites or the Doorway to Summer Suite that they have, uh, but it is still a fantastic piece of music. And this is Retro Prog at its finest. So definitely check that out. That is a huge recommended and required listening. From there, uh, we go into the other two albums that are recommended. So if you like that, check out the first album, Doorway to Summer. Uh, it is just as good as Bloom Judd, as well as the follow-up of Lover's End. Uh, it's a little bit more poppy, a little bit more accessible, a little bit more mainstream. Okay, so that is the box of uh, required listenings, as well as some, if you like those, go to that. We're gonna get into some deep cuts now. Some of those, um, retro prog bands that I still love, but you do need to have a little bit of a concept to really get into these songs as well. Uh, and so the first one is coming from Kappa, and I think I pronounced that right. Again, they're from Sweden, but they had this giant renaissance within the uh, l late 2000s, early 2000s, late to 2000s. Uh, and the one that I would recommend to you is In the Wake of Evolution. That whole disc is just beautiful. That is definitely a uh, recommended one for you. Uh, getting into another one, which is Car Mechanic. These guys uh, have a little bit of a darker atmosphere to them, uh, but they have a really great drive as well. There's a lot more energy with these guys. Uh, and the album that I would recommend to you is Who's the Boss in the Factory? Just the three steps from the edge, Who's the Boss in the Factory? As well as the ending suite on that. Fantastic, fantastic work. Uh, from here, we'll go into The Tangent, another fantastic progressive rock. Uh, outfit. Uh, this one's being helmed by Andy Tellison. This is much more of like a raging uh, against where the music has been, uh, but it doesn't really present it in a very dark atmosphere. So it's for that reason I put it into a retro prog, especially because there's such a heavy emphasis of looking back to the past and trying to emulate that. With The Tangent, they've put out beautiful works. In the Place of the Q is the one that I will recommend from you. And if you like that, go on to the second disc from Not As Good As The Book. Uh, as well as La Sac de Travail, um, a great concept album about the working man. Now the last two I'm going to suggest are single songs. Uh, the first comes from Magic Pie, a fantastic outfit. Definitely check out The Suffering Joy. And finally, I'll leave you with Unitopia's The Garden. This one definitely feels like it is a Genesis track. Uh, and the closing suite of The Garden is just beautiful. 
So there's my box. There's some recommended go from there type of things. What did you guys think? What would you guys include within your retro prog starter kit? Let me know by some of those bands, albums, and songs by commenting down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think the next one I'll do will either be the progressive metal or the contemporary progressive rock because there's a little bit of a difference between the retro, neo, and contemporary progressive rock uh, outfits. So it'll be one of the two. Look out for that coming pretty soon. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.